Hey students, this is a short lesson about depreciation. So depreciation is how we value an asset that we use over time in order to create revenues or to produce products which in turn are sold to create revenues. So certain depreciable assets like machinery, trucks, other vehicles, um, fences, uh, sometimes barns or other buildings. Um, livestock can sometimes be depreciable. Irrigation wells. Um, and actually, land is not a depreciable asset. It has some types of improvements to the land that can be depreciated. Like, for example, on my farm, I'm just paying for a very expensive septic system. So I would imagine that that would have a useful life of I hope at least 50 years and then over time it loses its value okay so there's three types we have straight line depreciation very easy we have declining balance depreciation not very difficult and then we have a very simplified um, mechanism called partial depreciation which allows us to depreciate something if we buy it in the middle of a year because we don't always go shopping for new equipment on J January 1st so the information that you need in order to calculate depreciation is how much you paid for the asset, that's your cost, salvage value, how much you'll sell it for when you're done using it. So think about your current car, like maybe in the end you can get, depending on if you have an old car, maybe you could get like two grand to turn over and buy something with or buy a new car, or maybe you have a new car and you like to switch it out every couple of years because you get a higher salvage value. And then expected life is how long you think you will use it. And of course, these things are not actually going to be true, but we have to identify some parameters for doing our evaluations. And this depreciation is also very significant for the Schedule F tax form. And then for declining balance, we need to know about the book value, which is the total cost of my asset minus the accumulated depreciation of each year. Okay, straight line. So my book value or how much I paid because right now I haven't, I haven't deducted any depreci depreciation. I paid 100 grand, and I'm gonna sell it for 15 grand in five years. So very simple, I use the formula, cost minus salvage value divided by expected life. So 100,000 minus 15,000 is 85,000 divided by five, which is 17,000. So every year, my depreciation is 17,000. At the, um, end of year three my accumulated depreciation is 51,000 so that would just be each year times how many years I am counting so we'll say the end of year three here next we have the declining balance and declining balance can be various amounts like 100% 200% or 150% so this one has a few more steps and we're going to calculate the declining balance using a double um, declining balance. So the things that you need is the same as before, um, but generally we don't actually use the cost. We kind of use something called book value, and the original book value at the beginning of year one is most likely the cost because we haven't depreciated anything. So here's my formula. So I will take the book value at the beginning of the year, um, and then I need to times that times my rate, my depreciation rate. So how I calculate R, or what is R, is that's the, just the rate at which I'm depreciating. So double declining balance tends to be heavier depreciation each year. So the example that we have um, is we can, oh that's right, we calculate R by 100% of the useful life divided by the number of years. So in the previous example, we had five years. So then we would have a 20% um, times the amount that you want to uh, create the declining balance for. So if R is my percentage rate, which is 20, then I want to use for the double declining balance um, times two because it's double or it's 200%. So for example, if I wanted to use a 150% declining balance um, and my R was 20, so then I would adjust it to uh, 30 because 
150% of 20 is 30. Okay, so now we are going to use the multiplier. That's going to be R. Um, and if it, R is totally weird to you, just ignore it, and you'll see what we do when we calculate it. So now each year we need to deduct the book value, and the book value is what we take the percentage off of. So let's take a look at an example. So my book value, oops, I need to take it out of slideshow. So my book value is 100,000. R, like I said, is 20%, but I'm doing double, so it's going to be 0 0.4 or 40%, whichever you prefer. So then my annual depreciation is going to be the first year, $40,000. Okay. So now I take 100,000 minus 40,000. I'm left over with my uh, book value, 60,000 times 40% stay the same. And then we have 24,000. And then we take 60,000 minus uh, 24,000. And we take 40% of that. Uh, 14,400. And then we want to take 36,000 minus 14,400, uh, which is 21. And 40% of 21 is <clears throat> uh, 8,640. So we deduct 21,600 minus 8640, which is 12,960. Okay, so important note here, we actually completed the depreciation by the middle, actually, or end of year four, we could say middle, because we have to actually credit back part of this, um, because we expect to sell it for 15,000, so let's see. Uh, all right, so now I need this number plus the remaining balance of depreciation. So actually, I complete my depreciation um, <coughs> within year four. So this should equal 15,000. And not, that's not really terribly relevant, but just know that you can complete your depreciation generally before the um, salvage value time period with the double declining balance because there's such a heavy rate of depreciation every year. So if I wanted to calculate my annual, uh, or I'm sorry, my accumulated depreciation by the end of year three, I would just add up these three columns. And then I get 78,400 is my accumulated depreciation at the end of year three. Okay, so finally, the last thing, and as you can imagine, this is much faster in Excel. So a partial year is I buy a tractor in June, and I need to depreciate it for, let's say, half a year because I buy it on June 1st. So I, <clears throat> if I think about my previous examples for straight line depreciation, take this out. Um, so I will take 17000 uh, first year, I'm sorry, the second year plus half of the first year, so the end of year two depreciation total or accumulated depreciation is 25,500. Okay, students, hopefully that made sense. Now I'm going to give you a practice example. All right, students, I want to give you the opportunity to practice what you just learned. So, Okay, pause the video and take a look at this question. There's a new tractor purchased January 1st, 124 grand, and the salvage value is 20K and a useful life of eight years. So calculate the straight line and then do the um, double declining balance and find the depreciation 
um, at the end of year two. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at the responses. Uh, straight line depreciation, um, cost minus salvage value divided by number of years. Every year I deduct 13000 for my depreciation expense. In two years, that's a $26,000 uh, accumulated depreciation. Okay, so accumulated depreciation at the end of year two using double declining. So I need to take R, which is, or find R, 100% of eight years, 100% of the asset value divided by the expected lifespan, and that's 12.5. 12.5 times two gives me 25%. So now I take 25% of my uh, book value, which is 124,000, and then I deduct or depreciate 31,000 year one. And then I adjust or I take the book value by subtracting the asset value minus the depreciation amount, which is 93,000 times 25%. And then at the end of year two, I have depreciated, let's see, yeah, 31,000 plus 23,000, which will be my accumulated depreciation. So this 69,000 is my book value that will go to the next. So, like I said, accumulated depreciation, end of year two, you've got to combine these two. That's your annual depreciation for year one, 31,000, and annual depreciation for year two. Okay, good luck.